best players in the league as voted on by NFL players. So it is not a compilation of who the coaches think are best or who the fans think are best, but by NFL players and their peers themselves. So the NFL just finished posting their top 10 of this year's top 100 players and the internet is going absolutely nuts at who got ranked number one in the NFL this year. So I've decided we should go through all 100 players in descending order, react to what their rankings are, and see just how crazy this top number one overall ranking is. So without further ado, let us get into this year's NFL top 100. So starting off at the 100th spot, we've got outside linebacker of the Indianapolis Colts, Zaire Franklin. He goes from being not ranked in the previous year to number 100 overall. Uh, you know, I didn't spend a lot of time watching the Colts. I feel like I've heard Zaire Franklin's name mentioned. I'm going to trust that this is a solid rank. Number two, we're moving into rank number 99. This is outside linebacker of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Levante David. Uh, David was an integral part of the Buccaneers' success when they won the Super Bowl a few years back with Tom Brady. I've heard nothing but praise from his peers at that time. And though he is getting on the older side, it says that this is his, what, 13th season. Um, makes sense that he has kind of dropped down, but this is still an improvement considering he was not ranked in last year's top 100. After that, we move into rank number 98, and this is defensive tackle of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Cameron Hayward. Uh, Cam Hayward, he, in the last couple years, was floating more around the top 50 uh, last year, clocking in at 53. But in 2023-2024 season, Cam Hayward was dealing with a lot of injuries, causing him to drop significantly on this list. Now, Cam Hayward, when he is available, I do think that he is uh, all pro worthy and that he is a great player, great defensive unit for the Steelers. So hopefully, uh, you know, he's able to make a comeback and get higher on this list next year. But we'll have to see. He is getting up there. After that, we move into rank number 90. 797 goes to Washington Commanders wide receiver Terry McLaurin uh, and this is three spots down from his position last year he finished at 94 um, honestly there is no reason for McLaurin to fall uh, and if there's anyone to blame it it's just his quarterbacks this guy has had no real good quarterbacks to play with since entering the league uh, putting up together five straight seasons of 1,000 yards uh, with dudes like Ryan Fitzpatrick, Sam Howell, Dwayne Haskins, rest in peace, uh, and, you know, like Kyle Allen, um, Tyler Heineke, so the quarterback play has been middling at best, and yet Terry McLaurin consistently manages to be a 1,000-yard wide receiver, so I think that he sneakily is going to have a Mike Evans type of career. I hope that he eventually gets his quarterback savior, whether that is Jaden Daniels or someone else down the line, but very underrated dude, and yeah, he has to float around the bottom of this list until he gets some, like, exceptional quarterback play, so we'll see if he gets to bump up next year, but uh, shout out to him for making it once again. After that, at number 96, we've got Buffalo Bills offensive tackle Deion Dawkins. Uh, you know, he was not ranked the previous year. Comes in at 96, so good job for him making the list. Uh, here it says that he allowed just a 6.9% pressure rate, which was third lowest among left tackles. Uh, and that is one hell of a stat to have to your name. So shout out Deion Dawkins, and let us move on. Next up, we've got safety of the Seattle Seahawks, Julian Love, coming in at 95. He was not ranked in the previous year, uh, and he just got his first ever Pro Bowl nod. So, you know, you for a top 100 ranking, you could say. And, yeah, filling in that spot that used to be Jamal Adams's. Now, Julian Love has taken over as the safety for the Seahawks, and he's doing a good job. Next up, coming in at rank 94, is quarterback of the Jacksonville Jaguars, Trevor Lawrence. This is actually two spots higher than last year, and I will say that this is a bit surprising to me, uh, just compared to how Lawrence did in his season last year. It was kind of looked at as like a breakout season, and especially the way that he came back in that playoff game against the Chargers, I think people were 
really high on him going into this year, especially with the addition of Calvin Ridley. All signs pointed to the offense booming, them taking over the division so clearly, with the Colts and Texans being kind of donkey doo doo, having a top five overall pick each. And, um, yeah, uh, I don't think anyone was really expecting the Titans to do much either, so it looked like a cakewalk to the playoffs. And though they started off hot, they kind of fell apart, and I feel like the Trevor Lawrence hype train turned into a hate train, uh, kind of like you see with many quarterbacks in the league. So, uh, I'm, I'm actually quite happy that Trevor Lawrence was still able to make it and even improve. I really thought after the latter half of his season, people were going to write him off, that they're going to say, like, oh, he's not a good quarterback anymore. I feel like I've already seen a lot of the, like, Daniel Jones comparisons, but... Trevor Lawrence, he's still that guy, he's still a very talented quarterback, and I think that he can put together a better season next year, so uh, congrats on him for even improving his spot at all. Next up, we've got the free safety of the Minnesota Vikings in Harrison Smith, coming in at number 93. This is a four position upgrade for Harrison Smith, uh, bumped up four spots. And it's his year that Smith posted 93 tackles and a career best six quarterback hits in 2023. Um, and. Whoa. He also finished with three sacks, which all took place week four in the win over the Panthers. That is quite funny. Uh, but you know, Harrison Smith is nearing on the end of his career. He's had a very illustrious career, finishing with six Pro Bowls and an All Pro. Entering his 13th season at 35 years old, it does look like this might be one of his last entries. So good that he is still able to ride out among the best of the best. After that, we have at number 92, quarterback for the New York Jets, Aaron Rodgers. Um, this is a bump down of 41 spots from his previous season. And, you know, it's... It's kind of deserved in one way or another. Obviously, Aaron Rodgers, yeah, he's not going to be the 92nd best in the league, but you have to factor in he didn't play at all last year. Three snaps towards Achilles out for the year. Uh, this is the lowest he's ever been on the list, but this is also the most major injury of his career, the most time that he's ever missed. I have no doubt in my mind that he is going to bounce back and have some pretty good quarterback play. And if he doesn't, then poor, poor Jets fans, because I, I feel like they really need one good year of quarterback play, at least. Um, but yeah, really a shame, and this isn't anything that's his fault, it's the turf, you know, gotta get that fixed up. I think that every NFL stadium should replace their turf with grass fields. All the players are vouching for it, they're gonna do it for the Olympics. I don't see why it's not possible, but yeah, uh, just a bummer about what happened to him, and as far as his ranking, uh, it's good to see that people still hold him in high regard and are able to rank him in the top 100, even though he completely missed the last season. And finally, our last entry of the 90s, we've got at number 91, the cornerback for the Seattle Seahawks, Tariq Woolen. Uh, Tariq Woolen was one of the most impressive cornerbacks of the previous year's rookie class. Uh, a lot of people were saying that he his level of play was at par, if not better, than Sauce Gardner's, and I feel like in his rookie year that was definitely true. He was uh, clearly top two cornerback within his draft class, but he did regress quite a bit and lived in the bit of a shadow of Devon Witherspoon, the new cornerback selection for the Seahawks, with Witherspoon kind of taking over as the best uh, defensive back on that team. So, Drake Wallen with a little bit of a regression. I I expect him to bounce back, have a little bit of a better season next year, but yeah, this ultimately bumped him down 15 spots, and I do think that is deserved. Alright, and with that, we move into the uh, spots 81 through 90. So, coming in at number 90, we have a wide receiver of the Philadelphia Eagles, Devontae Smith. Devontae Smith just, uh, had a thousand yard season for the second consecutive time and uh, he had a pretty good start to the season. I, I feel like he was definitely outplaying AJ, yeah, AJ Brown for quite a bit but then you know AJ Brown started getting frustrated as for the ball more and Devontae Smith is much more comfortable being that second fiddle. I think he has wide receiver one talent but A.J. Brown's a little bit of a diva, and Jalen Hurts was 
was hearing it, so even though the Eagles were very successful, doing very well at the start of the season, and I think that was more on the back of um, Devontae Smith, he had to take a back seat, and he is a humble guy, so I respect it, I respect that he puts team happiness over, you know, his own personal pride and glory, and I'm glad that he moved up 10 spots on this list, honestly I think that he could be even higher if if it weren't for A.J. Brown having such, I mean, obviously A.J. Brown is very talented and it's good that he gets the ball, but really, Devontae Smith, he could have had an even better season than he did, in my opinion. After that, coming in at number 89, we've got safety of the Arizona Cardinals, Buda Baker. Uh, this is a drop off by 16 spots for Buda Baker. He showed up in 12 games and somehow managed to get a Pro Bowl nod, but it was his lowest BFF grade in his career, and I'm pretty sure that Buda Baker should not have made the Pro Bowl. I remember some very, very good safety being snubbed from the Pro Bowl. I don't know if it was Anton Winfield Jr. or someone else, but I remember looking at it and being like, why the heck did Buda Baker make the Pro Bowl this year? So, it is what it is. Obviously, if you're Buda Baker, you're not going to complain, but um, a bit of regression and missing so many games, I think it makes sense that he dropped as many spots as he did. Then, at number 88, we've got guard for the Atlanta Falcons, Chris Lindstrom. Uh, this is a drop-off by one position. He was 87 last year. He drops to 88. It's very consistent. And honestly, I feel like Lindstrom could be higher up on this list, but offensive linemen do not get all that glory, all that much glory uh, in this game, even though they have a very difficult job. Lindstrom is one of the best guards in the game, um, very consistently good, and yeah, it says here he had a 98% efficiency rate for the second straight year, back-to-back uh, -back Pro Bowls, and only allowed two quarterback hits, three sacks. the offensive line I feel like was horrible and the 
receivers definitely all underperformed, including Darren Waller. So he was really the only person playing up, playing like at all average. Truly a shame he dropped 55 spots, but that's just reflective of the Giants season as a whole. They went from a playoff team, a team that won a game in the playoffs, to one of the worst in the league. And yeah, I think his ranking suffered as a consequence of that, and just poor blocking and injury. So behind a better offensive line and, you know, more time to heal up and just better offensive skill positions, I think that Saquon Barkley can easily make top 50 again. He is a premier talent. He's not that old. We just have to see if he can stay healthy, but I'm expecting good things out of Barkley again in the future. Next up, we've got at number 85, offensive tackle of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Tristan Wirfs. Um, I believe it was Tristan Wirfs who just got a major contract uh, to make him one of the most paid offensive tackles of all time. Uh, and yeah, this guy is great. He's 25 years old. Very solid. Uh, I know that he was very big in blocking for Brady, and I think that he's done well ever since. It says here that he finished with an 80-plus BFF grade for the fourth season in a row. He recorded the second-highest pass-blocking grade among all offensive tackles and just got nominated to his third consecutive Pro Bowl. So, all things considered, yeah, very good year. Next up, at number 84, we've got the wide receiver for the Seattle Seahawks, DK Metcalf. Uh, the previous year, he was not ranked at all. Uh, and this year, he had 1,114 yards, 66 catches, and 8 touchdowns, and a career-best 16.9 yards per reception. He got a Pro Bowl selection, and yeah, um, big bounce back here for DK. It's actually surprising, because when you think about how the Seattle Seahawks did two years ago with Geno Smith and everything like that, I feel like there was more hype, there was more success, Geno's turnaround season, but in that process, Tyler Lockett was doing better than DK Metcalf, so that's why DK Metcalf went unranked, and even though the Seattle Seahawks progressed a bit, DK was a bit more featured and good, so, you know, solid comeback from him, I feel like he is the top dog going forward, Tyler Lockett just keeps getting older and older, uh, GSN, he didn't have the most flashy of rookie years, he had a very solid one, but I feel like the expectations were abnormally high, I think when Lockett eventually retires, you're going to have a killer duo in DK and GSN as your main guys, but, yeah, good, good job on DK. Next up, we've got free safety of the Los Angeles Chargers at number 83, Derwin James. Uh, and this is a drop-off of 53 spots for Derwin James. Um, the Chargers just were not good on defense this year. Uh, 47 touchdowns. Um, and he led the team with 86 solo tackles, 125 combined tackles, 2 sacks, and an interception. But... His BFF grade was at an all-time low, and yeah, the, the defense was just really bad. When you let the Aiden O'Connell lead Las Vegas Raiders put up like a franchise record on your head, naturally you're going to get a bad grade. We'll see. I think that the team as a well whole should be a lot better next year, but I always think about think that about the Chargers. So yeah, I can't really say. Next up, we have. At number 82, defensive end for the Chicago Bears, Montez Sweat. And uh, before I even read anything, I think Montez Sweat finished the season as the leading sack leader for both the Washington Commanders and the Chicago Bears when it was all said and done. And when you just think about something like that, a guy getting traded in the middle of the season and finishing as the top sack guy for two different teams, yeah, put him in the top 100. So it was not ranked this year. Uh, sorry, it was not ranked last year. He finishes at 82 this year, and yeah, um, well deserved. This is actually quite interesting. Coming in at number 81, we've got quarterback of the Atlanta Falcons. Um, now, used to be Minnesota Vikings and Kirk Cousins. This is a drop-off by 39 spots. Um, here it says that in his seventh starts before daring his Achilles, he had 18 touchdowns, 2,331 yards, and five interceptions.
interceptions. And yeah, on one hand, Kirk had a pretty good season two years ago, and they made the playoffs. So considering the team's success under those few weeks that he was around, it is surprising that he still managed to make the top hundred, and he missed over half the season. But you do have to recall that, like, the Vikings last year, when they were losing those games, it was like not at all on him. Like, he was putting up 300 yards, two touchdowns, three touchdowns. He was playing lights out, and he just could not get them the victory. Um, and it looked like he was going to have a record-breaking season before he had a, you know, an Achilles-breaking season. So, uh, really tragic. We could have seen an all-time performance out of Kirk Cousins, put the team on his back, but it ultimately just ended up being too much stress for him. I'm excited to see what he does in a Falcons uniform. I don't know if this is going to be more like Derek Carr or more like Tom Brady. It's really hard to say. Uh, the NFC South is such a jumble every year. You think that anyone can go in and have success, but obviously Derek Carr could not, and I don't know what he's going to look like after this injury, so we'll see. Um, can you tell I'm trying to get through this as fast as possible? After that, we go into players 80 to 71. Debuting at number 80, we have tight end of the Detroit Lions, Sam Laporta. Uh, Sam Laporta, Pro Bowl in his first year, and he had 86 catches during the regular season, which broke the tight end rookie record. And yeah, honestly, one of the best tight ends in the league, just as a first timer. So it makes sense that he was able to debut at number 80. Then we have the biggest drop drop off thus far uh, in the free safety of the Pittsburgh Steelers, Minka Fitzpatrick, coming in at number 79 this year, uh, which is 61 spots down from his previous ranking last season. Uh, Minka Fitzpatrick made the Pro Bowl, but he missed seven games. Yeah, that's really all it says. You missed seven games. The, the Steelers, they were okay on defense. I don't know. I guess I don't know too much about a season. But, yeah, hopefully he can be more healthy and get back to the top. He's, he's well-renowned. People really like him. <laughs> what more can I say? After that, we've got rookie running back for the Los Angeles Rams, Kyron Williams, debuting at number 78. Uh, and I feel like this also makes a lot of sense. Fantasy-wise, he was an absolute beast in the games that he played, but when you just look at his stats alone, he... Wait, sorry, he's not a rookie. That was his second year. Um, he recorded 1,144 rushing yards, 12 touchdowns, and then also threw in 32 catches for three touchdowns. And he was the first Rams running back to rush for a thousand yards since Todd Gurley. And so Kyron Williams made the running the Pro Bowl off of that. And yeah, if you paid at all any attention to Kyron Williams last year, you know that the guy was beast and he was missing games and still one of the most efficient backs in the league. So uh, well deserved spot for him. Then we have defensive end of the Cincinnati Bengals, Trey Hendrickson. Coming in at number 77, this is two spots lower than his previous um, appearance. One second. surprising that he got put down on this list, but I think with 
I think it was just not being as good as people were hoping for. He made his weight down rather than up. Then, coming in at number 76, we've got linebacker for the San Francisco 49ers, Dre Greenlaw. Uh, this is a three-spot improvement from the year before. Uh, Dre Greenlaw was the one who tore his Achilles during the Super Bowl, yeah, and that was totally devastating. I felt really bad for him because it wasn't even like a football play. It was totally just on the sidelines. He jumped up and got caught on the field and yeah, missed the most important game of the season. So yeah, a very nice season from him. 49ers had one of the best defenses in the league, and yeah, truly unfortunate. I wish him all the best on his recovery. But uh, glad that it was me able to make an improvement on this list. Then coming in at number 75, we've got Los Angeles Chargers quarterback Justin Herbert. This is a 43 spot drop off from the previous year. Uh, and a large part of this is due to Justin Herbert's broken finger. You know, he wasn't able to finish out the season as he was in the previous year. He finished with just 3,134 passing yards, 20 touchdown passes and 228 yards rushing with three touchdowns. I think that he should have a good bounce back in the air. I, it didn't seem like his broken finger was that um, major. Uh, obviously, you can't throw the ball that well, but I don't think there's going to be any long sustaining damage. And that is one of those more freak injuries. I don't think that the recovery should be that bad on it. So I'm expecting good things out of Jim Harbaugh led Chargers team this year. And hopefully they're able to get Justin Herbert looking back to one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Because when he is playing on his A game, uh, I do think that he is very talented. One of the best deep balls. Anywho, after that we've got Atlanta Falcons free safety Jesse Bates coming in at number 74 and he was not ranked in the previous season um, it says here in his first season with Falcons Bates received his first Pro Bowl selection in his sixth season and he had six interceptions three forced fumbles and 132 tackles so yeah uh, I heard nothing but good things about Jesse Bates last year I was hearing all kinds of complaints from Bengals fans and the fact that they allowed Jesse Bates to walk at all um, kind of surprising that he never made it on the Bengals I guess I don't know his game all that well but yeah it seemed like he was well loved by the fans and a big pillar of that defense uh, one of the defenses that led them to the Super Bowl and then the Falcons got dog so good job on him I'm surprised he wasn't ranked in the previous year, but very well deserved rank this time. After that, we've got defensive tackle of the Tennessee Titans, Jeffrey Simmons, coming in at 73. This is a drop off by 15. Um, Jeffrey says Simmons, I think like two years ago, he was having a really good year. Um, yeah, I didn't hear all that much about him at all last year. Titans were kind of horrible, and he only played 12 games, so I'm surprised that he was able to even log a log something this high, but I guess people remember how good he was, so he didn't drop off all that much. After that, we've got wide receiver for the New York Jets, Garrett Wilson, um, who improved from 74 to 72 in his sophomore year season. I think that the expectations were very high for Garrett Wilson, considering they got a major quarterback improvement from Zach Wilson to Aaron Rodgers. But with Aaron Rodgers missing the entire season, uh, yeah, Garrett Wilson's stock plummeted. He obviously wasn't going to have the same season. But even then, he finished with over 1,000 yards and 95 catches and four touchdowns, which, yeah, it's not a lot, but he had some of the worst quarterback play in the entire league. And he managed to keep somewhat consistent with his numbers from his offensive rookie of the year performance so uh, the talent is there the production surprisingly is still somehow there so hopefully with Aaron Rodgers steering the ship he can have that big breakout season that everyone's been rooting for at least last year then at number 
71, we've got offensive tackle for the Houston Texans, Laramie Dunsell. This is an improvement by 14 spots from the previous year. Um, he, you know, was a good blocker. Helped the Texans be a lot better than anyone was expecting them to be. Uh, and I guess that's in big part to just good protection. You can see how Bryce Young on the Panthers was horrible. It did, just had no time in the pocket whatsoever. Could not develop one of the worst teams in the league. And the Texans, on the other hand, they were doing a much better job of protecting the rookie quarterback. And it let CJ Stroud really blossom and be very effective right off the bat. So, uh, yeah, good on Larry Dunsel. next bracket of players. This is spots 70 to 61. So coming in at number 70, we've got wide receiver for the Cleveland Browns, Amari Cooper. Uh, he was not ranked in the previous year. It goes to number 70. And yeah, I think that he was having an underrated season last year. Finished number 10 in receiving yards. This is with half a year of Deshaun Watson, half-ish of a year with Joe Flacco. Uh, was a big reason why Joe Flacco was able to win that Comeback Player of the Year award. And, yeah, just like consistently very good across his entire career. You know, whether you look at him with the Raiders, or look at him with the Cowboys, or look at him with the Browns, he's always been very productive and reliable. So, expecting good things out of Amari Cooper again next year. His connection with Watson was quite solid before Watson went down. So, We'll see. I think he'll definitely be in this list once again next year. Then at number 69, we've got wide receiver of the Los Angeles Rams, Cooper Cup. Uh, and Cooper Cup returned from injury, but even with his return from injury, he still had a lot of lingering problems. Um, only played in 12 games, and he finished with 59 catches, 737 yards, and 5 touchdowns. And yeah, I think that this is a little bit of a legacy spot for him. When you look at the season that he had, it wasn't all that great. He didn't play all that much. He had some bright flashes, but some, it was just okay. Obviously very outshined by rookie Bukunakua. And we just have to hope that he can, you know, reclaim the player that he once was when Matthew Stafford first arrived in LA and he won the Triple Crown. Now, that might be going to Buka Nikua. you know, Buka having an amazing, exceptional rookie year. Uh, Cooper Cup might not be the same player that he once was, especially turning 31. He is due for a regression. Uh, we might have seen, we have seen the best from him. I don't know if we'll ever see him quite as high as we did on this list, but, you know, hey, at least he still made it. Then, at number 68, we've got defensive end of the Houston Texans, who used to play for the Minnesota Vikings, Daniil Hunter. Um, Daniil Hunter just won back-to-back -back Pro Bowl selections. He has been a very good pass rusher, uh, dealt with injuries earlier in his career, but very, too, very good two seasons back-to-back, -back. and it's actually kind of surprising that he didn't make the top 100 in this season, two seasons ago. Last year, he had 16 and a half sacks, 83 tackles, and a league leading 23 tackles for loss. Uh, also accompanied by four forced fumbles and 22 quarterback hits. Uh, just looking at the numbers, I am surprised he was not ranked higher. I guess the Vikings didn't have that great of a season, but these numbers are phenomenal. And yeah, uh, Daniel Hunter obviously scored a very big contract with the Texans in the offseason. Two years, 49 million, and it sounds well deserved. So I wish him all the best success in his new hometown. After that, we've got offensive tackle of the Miami Dolphins, Teron Armstead, coming in at 67. This is a 16 spot improvement from the previous year. Um, only played 10 games, had a lot of. Uh, had a good season as a rookie 
and the Miami offense was pretty explosive, but it's not often that someone only plays 10 games and improves in their standings on the top 100, so must have had one hell of a early half to the season. Then at number 66, we've got wide receiver for the San Francisco 49ers, Brandon Ayuk, um, and yeah, this, this makes sense, this late guy, 17 and 17.9 yards per reception, finishes with 1,342 receiving yards, which was 7th, and even though we don't know where he's going to be, a big part of Brock Purdy's MVP campaign, uh, had the absolute breakout year everyone was talking about, everyone knew that he could have, and really took over as a wide receiver one uh, on his team, so yeah, great year by him. Then at number 65, we've got free safety for the Miami Dolphins, formerly the Buffalo Bills, in Jordan Boyer. Uh, this is a drop-off by eight spots. Uh, he broke 100 tackles last year. He honestly just is a good guy. He's not the flashiest, but he makes plays. And I feel like I saw Mac Jones throw a few spectacular interceptions to him in the last couple years. So I can see why he made this list. What I can't see is why the Buffalo Bills let him walk away. Uh, I feel like the Bills offseason has been very puzzling um, with them making trades with the Chiefs to let them get their waters deeper, with them giving away Stephon Dix, which yeah, I guess you had to do, but I don't know if the return was all that good. And then just, yeah, a large part of their defense, they let good guys just walk and I think they're going to be worse. I think that they're going to be decently worse, and this is going to be a decent part of it. Um, Jordan Boyer, and now he joins the Miami Dolphins, who should be a bit better. Then at number 64, we've got linebacker for the Pittsburgh Steelers, but before the Baltimore Ravens, Patrick Queen. Uh, Patrick Queen had a very good season. I think the entire secondary for the Baltimore Ravens had a great season. Geno Stone, him, just uh, Marlon Humphrey, um, all these guys. And, yeah, uh, he joins a league enemy, or a division rival in the Pittsburgh Steelers. I know a lot of people are mad about that, but well-deserved spot after not being ranked on this list at all two years ago. And, yeah, he was named second name all pro, so definitely a top 100 player. Then, at number 63, we've got Miami Dolphins wide receiver Jalen Waddle. This is a drop-off by 19 spots for Jalen Waddle. Uh, he's had three consecutive 1,000-yard seasons, and it's his third straight top 100 appearance. I don't know if I like him being this high, if I'm being quite honest. I think that Jalen Waddle last year... Let me pull it up. Let me pull it up. Jalen Waddle stats. And Devante Smith stats. Last year, Jalen Waddle finished with 72 catches, 1,014 receiving yards, a 14.1 average, and 4 touchdowns. Whereas... Devontae Smith had 81 catches for 1,066 yards, a 13.2 average, and 7 touchdowns. Uh, yeah, so that confirms what I was thinking. There is no way that Jalen Waddle should be rated higher than Devontae Smith when you think about, like, the best wide receiver twos in the league. Yes, these guys do come to mind, but the early half of the season, Devontae Smith was the better player, and yeah, the Eagles didn't finish off on the highest of notes, but the Dolphins had the exact same meltdown that the Eagles did, and yeah, I guess you can make the argument that Tua is not as good of a quarterback as Jalen Hurts, but even then, I don't think there's any reason why the disparity between these two guys should be that high. I think, if anything, Devontae Smith should be ranked higher than Jalen Waddle, and I don't know why Jalen Waddle did not fall further. I know that he's fast and he's speedy, but yeah, I don't think that he should be this high. Anyway, after that we've got Bradley Chubb, offensive lineman of the Miami Dolphins, uh, coming in at number 62. He was not ranked in the previous year. He led the league with six force fumbles while also recording 22 quarterback hits, 73 tackles, 11 sacks, and 11 tackles for loss. All around very good year. Uh, good to see him bounce back from that injury and see 
was uh, a bit ago. And finally, at number 61, we've got defensive tackle of the Baltimore Ravens, Justin Metabuke. Um, as I was saying, everyone on the Ravens secondary just had a, or just defense had a career year last year, it seemed like. He just signed a massive contract extension, four years, 98 millions. Got signed to his first Pro Bowl. Finished with 33 quarterback hits, 12 tackles for loss. And yeah, he wasn't ranked in the previous year, but it makes sense that he did this year. And you know, after that, we move into our 60 through 51 players. Uh, I'm going to pick up the pace a little bit. We'll see. I say that, but we'll see if I actually do. At number 60, we've got running back for the Miami Dolphins, Raheem Mostert, not ranked in the previous year. I don't know what to make of it. Raheem Mustard finished with over 20 touchdowns at 1,000 yards. He was pretty good on the 49ers, but he was never, like, that good. He'd always look like a, a product of the system. And, yeah, just had a phenomenal, phenomenal year. I do think it's a bit of a fluke. He had his breakout season at age 31. I don't think that's going to happen again, especially with Devon A. Chan's emergence. I think he gets phased out of this offense slowly by slowly, but we'll see what juice he has left. Uh, a very inspiring career trajectory. You know, I remember when he was on the 49ers many years ago, they had, like, the 49ers always just have a good running back. Like, they're always four running back deeps in their roster, it feels like. Any year that you think about it. And I remember watching a game where Ricky Mostert was coming out of the backfield, put his hand down to try and, like, brace for impact, and his wrist just snapped. And I was like, oh, wow, that is a bad injury. And they were pretty, like, awful that year. And then for him to come back from that injury, be, like, the leading running back for them in their playoff push was kind of inspiring. Then to see him get shipped off, and I really thought that he wasn't going to be all that effective or utilized with the Dolphins, and that he had just a phenomenal best year of his career. Uh, quite inspiring. So, you know, maybe he'll do it again somehow. I don't really understand how, but maybe. Anyway, after that, we've got middle linebacker for the Seattle Seahawks, or now the Washington Commanders, Bobby Wagner. This is a three-spot improvement for Bobby Wagner. And, you know, Bobby Wagner, one of the best linebackers, I think, of all time, when it's all said and done. He continues his excellence, made his ninth Pro Bowl, um, at 183 tackles, which is just led the NFL, just an absolute unit. Doesn't look like he's slowing down at all. Surprised that the Seahawks let him walk and that he's going to Washington. We'll see if he, you know, I feel like Washington kind of ruins people's careers a little bit in the NBA and the NFL. It's hard, uh, just the ownership is very bad, but we'll see. Maybe he can keep it up. After that, we've got defensive tackle of the Las Vegas Raiders, previously the Miami Dolphins, Christian Wilkins, uh, coming in at 58, 23 spot improvement from the previous year. He had nine sacks last year, 62 quarterback pressures, and just signed a massive deal. So, uh, big ups for Christian Wilkins, and we'll see how the Dolphins respond from this loss. Then we've got at number 57, Justin Simmons, free safety. And I think uh, this is a two-spot improvement from the previous year. I don't, I don't get it. Why is Justin Simmons a free agent? This guy has not gotten signed to a certain team, uh, any team. I. It must be the money. It must be money because talent-wise, he should be on a team. I think he just must want way too much money compared to what anyone is paying to anyone who is willing to pay him. Um, yeah. Then at number 56, we've got wide receiver of the Houston Texans, formerly the Buffalo Bills, Stephon Diggs. Um, he did record his sixth straight 1,000-yard season, but he was his weakest of his Buffalo Bills stint. I think that he started off okay, and then over the last eight weeks, pretty horrible. Had some 
crucial drops in that game that they lost against what was it, the Chiefs? Was it the Chiefs? I'm forgetting. I'm forgetting my playoffs. I know that they beat the Steelers, and then in the next round. Ravens, Texans, Chiefs, Bills, yeah, he really could have turned the game around for them, instead he dropped the ball, they lose the game, you know, all that off-season drama every year, year in, year out, finally gets moved, uh, truly, we'll have to see, uh, it's getting up there, I think he's like 30 now, his best years might be past him, but very talented quarterback in CJ Stroud, he gets to deal with maybe not the best coverage with Nico Collins and Nick Dell being very good on that team. Uh, maybe he can still be relevant both in just as a regular player as fantasy wide receiver. Uh, it's hard to know for sure, but yeah, definitely a regressed season for him. After that, we've got linebacker for the New York Giants, formerly the Panthers, Brian Burns. Uh, this is a one-spot drop-off from the previous year, so very consistent in back-to-back -back years. He had eight sacks, 18 quarterback hits, 16 tackles for loss, two passes defended, and a forced fumble. Uh, he's never had fewer than seven and a half sacks since entering the league. Um, and yeah, it looks to turn around this New York Giants defense. Then at number 54, we have Washington Commanders defensive end Jonathan Allen uh, dropping down spots from his previous year. Uh, this is his third consecutive appearance. Yeah. <laughs> then we've got Dallas Cowboys guard Zach Martin walking in at number 53, a 15 uh, spot improvement from the previous year. Um, I think he was like in the Madden 99 overall club recently. nine Pro Bowls and only eight holding penalties in his career. That is a stat. Um, and then, yeah, last year he was nominated to his seventh first team All-Pro selection. One of the best of the best. But yeah, once again, guard is not a glory position in football, so you have to settle for 53rd best in the league, even though you are undisputedly an absolute beast and one of the best at your position. Then at number 52, we've got Patrick Sertain, the second uh, cornerback of the Denver Broncos, dropping off by three spots. He, yeah, he's had a good last couple of years, but when you think about the Denver Broncos season last year, first half, the defense was abysmal, they looked horrible, let the Dolphins drop 70 on them, and then they kind of turned it around and were making that playoff push. Um, but you've got to Admirees. Longevity. Uh, taking 99% of snaps on defense last year, uh, playing 17 games. He was a first team all pro selection, and, you know, a lot of people do think that he is the best cornerback in the league, so. Uh, 52 is a bit low, I would say. I think that he could be a bit higher. Obviously, the team did not have all the success, but I've heard. about Patrick Sertain from just NFL fans as a total. Then we've got wide receiver for the Chicago Bears, formerly the Los Angeles Chargers, Keenan Allen, coming in at number 51. He was not ranked in the previous year. And yeah, this makes perfect sense. Keenan Allen had one of the best years of his career, uh, coming in with 1,243 receiving yards, seven touchdowns, uh, both the second best totals in his career. He also had 150 targets and 108 receptions, which both rank in the top 10 of the league. Justin Herbert loses his best weapon and really has nothing to deal with right now. And the Bears add another great wide receiver to an already stacked room. That sneezed me out. We'll have to see how that wide receiver room pans out, you know, with the Ramadans, DJ 
Jim Moore signing that big contract uh, extension, and then Keenan Allen getting reproductive last year, but who knows what it's like with Caleb Williams instead of Justin Herbert, and he is getting up there in age, so great season, but might have been the last great one. And finally, we move into the top 50. Um, this is players 50 to 41. At number 50, we've got Rashawn Gary, linebacker of the Green Bay Packers, not ranked in the previous year, and then ranked at 50 this year. Moving on, we've got running back of the Baltimore Ravens, formerly the Tennessee Titans, Derrick Henry, coming in at 49. Previously, he was 24 spots higher. Um, and he really was the face of the franchise while he was on that team. Helped them get to highs as, as far as like the AFC Championship game, I think, in one year. Uh, or at least the game before the AFC Championship game. But they never made it over that hump. And I do think that the Titans are like painfully irrelevant. Like, I don't, I think I just have some sort of internal hatred towards them being the, the team that ended Patriot dynasty, but like they're, they lack aura. They they severely lack aura. Derrick Henry being as, you know, celebrated and good as he was on the Tennessee Titans, it's remarkable. Truly, like the most impressive part of his career, because you've got C.J. Duque, you've got him, and then anyone else on that team is basically just washed. You you think of like the best players in the league, and when you see them go to Tennessee, it's like okay, their career's cooked. And the fact that they were able to be the first seed in any season and that they were able to have success is truly astounding. Um, yeah, I'm fully just dating right now, but last year, Derrick Henry finished with 1,167 rushing yards and 12 touchdowns, and now he moves to an even better offensive line, and I feel like he'll be even more productive. At number 48, we've got quarterback of the Detroit Lions, Jared Goff. Uh, this is an 18 spot improvement from the previous year. Um, the Lions made it to the NFC Championship game for the first time in 32 years. And he was second in the NFL in passing yards, fourth in touchdowns, and the Lions offense was fifth overall. Um, after, you know, a rough couple of years for Jared Goff, he had a huge bounce back. And know, they wrote him off, but he didn't write back. He got one of the biggest quarterback deals with the Lions showing that they're willing to stick with him. And really, it's just a nice comeback story for a former number one overall pick. You know, was able to take the Rams to that Super Bowl, couldn't get them to the promised land, and then in the first year without him, they, they swap him with Matthew Stafford. Matthew Stafford wins them a ring, but now it's looking like a pretty even-sided trade. You know, just Matthew Stafford being so much older, the Lions hopefully being able to keep Jared Goff's level of play this high and staying relevant for a few more years. Then at number 47, we've got defensive end for the Detroit Lions, Aiden Hutchinson, at a 41 spot improvement from the previous year. Uh, he finished second in defensive rookie of the year, voting just behind Sauce Gardner, and he was the defensive pillar. Uh, this guy is a beast. I feel like any Detroit Lions game I watched in the playoffs, they're like double teaming him. He is an absolute monster. I think in the Cowboys game, he was all over the field. He makes a lot of plays. I think that he is like a Micah Parsons level threat. And yeah, just absolute unit in the defensive front for the Lions. And I expect him to be even higher on this, or even lower on this list next year. Um, I think that 47 is honestly kind of high for him. His, his floor is way lower. Then after that, we've got Antoine Winfield Jr. Uh, coming in at number 46 for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, it says SAF. I, I wonder what that means. I thought he played safety. I guess that is safety. I don't know why they wrote it like that. I was not ranked in the previous year, and then he comes in at 46, um, position leading 90.7 BFF grade, 6 forced fumbles, 4 fumble recoveries, first team all pro, and highest paid DB in the league, well deserved, yeah, just great, great year for him, um, yeah, nothing more needs to be said. After that, we've got Jamar Chase, wide 
receiver of the Cincinnati Bengals, coming in at 45, a six spot drop off, uh, which is pretty impressive considering how much Joe Burrow missed um, this past year. We have Jamar Chase recording 145 targets with 100 catches, uh, finishing with over a thousand yards yet again, and even broke the Bears' single game receptions record with 15 catches for 192 yards and three touchdowns in week five. So, Jamar Chase, one of the best wide receivers in the league since day one, since he came into the league, and with a healthy Joe Burrow, I think he looks to be in that top five conversation once again. Then, at number 44, we've got outside linebacker of the New Orleans Saints, Demario Davis. This is a one-spot drop-off from the previous year. Um, Davis is headed into his 13th season. He has earned all of his All-Pro honors in the last five seasons, and finally made the Pro Bowl in the past two. He's only missed one game in the last seven seasons. And he's had at least six and a half sacks in the last two. And even though he's 35, he's cooking. Yeah. After that, we've got safety of the Baltimore Ravens at number 43, Kyle Hamilton. Once again, just secondary for the Ravens. Everyone is cooking. Um, he was first team Pro Bowl. Sorry, first team all pro and had a pro bowl and this is his first top 100 selection and he's only 23 so we'll see him on this list for many years to come i think then at number 42 you've got matthew stafford quarterback of the la rams uh he was not ranked in the previous year after dealing with a lot of injuries and then he came back um he had 3965 passing yards and 11 touchdowns to his second Pro Bowl. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say this is too high. Yes, he came back. Yes, he was better, but 4,000 yards when you consider other Matthew Stafford seasons, not that impressive. And 11 touchdowns is not that great. Obviously, no one expected the Rams to be as good as they were two years ago, but I think this is an over-evaluation of the quarterback position when we're considering the best players in the league. Objectively, I think if you're looking at a guy like Zach Martin, who is year in, year out the best at his position, and then you have Matthew Stafford, who was out for one year and then comes back and has, yeah, a decent year, and the Rams were much better, but I don't think that he deserves to be, like, over 10 spots higher than Zach Martin. I think that this is a little bit ridiculous. Uh, after that, we have... Lane Johnson, offensive tackle of the Philadelphia Eagles, coming in at 41, and he was exactly 41 in the previous year. Uh, very consistent. He had his fifth Pro Bowl last year. And yeah, just one of the main reasons why the Philadelphia offensive line is so good. Um, yeah. Then we move into players 40 to the rest of the 40 through 31. Coming in at number 40, we've got Las Vegas Raiders wide receiver Devontae Adams. Uh, 27 spot drop off, and that's not really his fault. He came to the Raiders because the Packers wouldn't play him, and he wanted to reunite with Derek Carr. Derek Carr was feeding him the ball. Then they get rid of Derek Carr. They play Jared Stidham. Get rid of Stidham, and they hire Jimmy Garoppolo. Jimmy Garoppolo is throwing him hospital balls. He has the most frustrating gear of his life. And then you've got Aiden up. Aiden O'Connell, like, I, I don't care about the Aiden O'Connell truthers. That guy's not good. He's going to lose the quarterback competition to Gardner Minshew. They're going to tank. They're going to get a real quarterback, Aiden O'Connell. The fact that they won that game against the Chiefs with him playing that badly is remarkable. They won despite him, not because of him. And, yeah, uh, Devontae Adams, I don't think he is ready to be written off. He had a great year last year despite that poor quarterback situation and I hope that he had some good balls from Gardner Minshew this year. Then we have Joe Burrow, quarterback of the Cincinnati Bengals coming in at 39. Uh, rough first five games I want to say and then in the next
first five games, he was pretty good, and then eventually got injured. Uh, does a 33 spot drop off for Joe Burrow? Just goes to show that, like, even on half a season, Joe Burrow, when he's healthy, he is that guy. He is really up there with Mahomes being one of the only quarterbacks that actually outdo Mahomes in some of their matchups. Uh, and when he's in there, he's there with the best of the best. Well, we'll see if he can recover from injury and be that guy that he used to be. He got that new haircut and he looks like Slim Shady. I, I don't think I did. Uh, maybe he's trying to show that it's all business. Dude, my cat is snoring. say anything I can talk about. Quinnen Williams is cool. I like his sneezing clip. That's really all I have to say about the guy. I know that he's a good football player, but I don't really like try to watch the Jets, especially when they're so horrible. Uh, you know, they are the rival team, and uh, every time they're on screen, I'm usually watching them against the Patriots, so I want nothing but death and despair for their team. So I'm sure that is great, but really all I've ever seen from the guy is a uh, Bless you. Thank you. And, yeah, that's it. After that, we've got quarterback of the Miami Dolphins, Tua Tungavailoa, coming in at 36. This is a 46 spot. Uh, improvement. No. Sorry. Um, he survived the season, you know, after so many concussions and misfires in the previous season. Tua managed to get through with that concussion and their first 11 win season in 15 years in number first number one total offense in 29 years as a sort of league leader in passing yards with 4,624 so yeah you know to a, I feel like he's dealt with a lot of hate people complaining about his arm his durability comes out plays all 17 games throws the most yards I think he's done a good job at addressing all of the concerns and they just need to build off of their performance last year they had a little bit of a fall off towards the end, a little bit of a crumble, but the Bills sneak into first place again at the very end of the year. So hopefully they can actually hold on, but the division they just get stronger with Aaron Rodgers returning, so we'll have to see. Then at number 35, we have linebacker for the Jacksonville Jaguars, Joshua Hines Allen. Used to be Josh Allen, but he changed his name. Um, he had 17 and a half sacks last year trailing only DJ Watt and 33 quarterback hits. They paid him quite a bit last year, or this past offseason, and yeah, well deserved. 17 and a half sacks is crazy. Then you've got Jordan Love, quarterback of the Green Bay Packers, making an appearance at 34. This is too high. Um, it wasn't pretty. Result of Love's first season as starter 
Universitas Green Bay has miraculously hit on a third straight franchise quarterback from week 11 through divisional round. He threw for 2,616 yards, 23 touchdowns, and 3 interceptions. And yes, during that span, he was very good, but... I think that Jordan Love has been getting a little too much love as of late. Packers went 9-8. and eight. Yes, they did win a playoff game, but look at Daniel Jones the previous year. Look at uh, Trevor Lawrence the previous year. They did those things. We had high expectations for them. Then they fell off. Uh, and for Jordan Love to be a backup for all those years, and then this is the first good outing he's had. And then you make him the highest paid quarterback in the league. It's too soon. I understand investing. I know you got the cheapest offense in the league. This is the best time to pay him. You did not have to give him all that money, in my opinion. Uh, great on him for being able to attain it. But if Jordan Love even plays the same, if he does not play better next season, people are going to be mad, and rightfully so, because this is an overpay, and this too early. You weren't a I understand wanting to lock up the quarterback position, but I don't know if I agree. I don't know if I agree on one good season that you make him the highest paid. Like, think about Patrick Mahomes' first season in the league. That was exceptional. And eventually he worked up to that contract where he signed for half a billion dollars. On an average year-by-year -year basis, Jordan Love being number one in the league after one good year, and that one year is nothing comparable to Patrick Mahomes. You did not need to do that. Anywho, after that, we've got Puka Nakua, wide receiver of the LA Rams, coming in at 33. Um, really speaking, Puka should have been the offensive Stroud battle against all odds and he led the Texans to the playoffs and he won a playoff game and I guess there's a lot of hype surrounding CJ Stroud and yes he was deemed to have a poor IQ people thought that he wouldn't be able to be good at football but when you think about the records that Bukunikul broke yes CJ Stroud had a great season but he didn't break every single rookie record he just had a good his first month as a pro with 39 catches for 501 yards and a touchdown and he ended his first regular season as a pro with a rookie record in both catches 105 and receiving yards 1,486 and he lit up the Lions in the losing postseason effort with 9 catches for 181 yards and a score his 5th 140 plus yard performance like Jamar Chase, Justin Jefferson these are all time wide receiver rookie seasons Kanakua had a better season than that, and he did win Offensive Rookie of the Year, and it is, it's outlandish, I, I truly think he got snubbed, I think that quarterback is just the biggest glory position in the league, they're going to get overloved, and I'm not trying to hate on the young quarterbacks, you can split the award if you really want to, but in no world does it make sense that Kanakua did not win an award for his record-breaking season. After that, we've got linebacker for the New York Jets, Quincy Williams, coming in at number 32, brother of Quinton Williams. Uh, he was unranked in the previous year. And, yeah, first time all pro. Team's second leading tackle leader with 139. Got his first ever interception, had two fumbles, 10 passes defense.
lot of touchdowns for Durham land, it seems like they always have a ball hawk. Now they're going to potentially have two ball hawks. Uh, I'm excited to see how it goes. Then, coming in at number 30, these are players 30 through 21. We've got Depo Samuel, San Francisco 49ers wide receiver. Uh, this is a 31 spot improvement for him. Uh, he had a lot of injuries the previous year after his holdout, but this year he had 60 receptions, 892 receiving yards, and 7 touchdown receptions. Also had 5 scores and 225 rushing yards. I don't think that this is Debo's best season. I don't think that he really was better than Brandon Ayuk, but I think that because of his playmaking ability, his yards after the catch, and his dynamic position ability uh, as well as a running back and wide receiver. People have a lot of respect for him, and I can respect that. I do think that all around he is very great as a true wide receiver. I think he was the wide receiver too on his team, but nonetheless, I think that this is well-deserved. Then we've got uh, offensive linebacker of the Los Angeles Chargers, Khalil Mack, coming in at 29, a nine-spot improvement. He had 17 sacks last year, which is four in the league. Uh, he now has over 100 in his career. And, yeah, uh, I think he had like six sacks in one game last year. But even then, finishing with 17 sacks is remarkable. So, good on him. Then, at number 28, we've got 49ers quarterback Brock Purdy. Uh, he was not ranked in the previous year. Brock Purdy, really just a true underdog story. Uh, you can say that he's a system quarterback and all that, but I I really didn't know what this team would look like without Jimmy Garoppolo, because any quarterback except for Garoppolo in the last couple years that has stepped into this Niners team, they have been unable to function. They are like a league worst team without Jimmy G at the quarterback helm, and then with Jimmy G, even though he wasn't good, the 49ers were great. And so, Brock Purdy was just the perfect replacement for him coming in through a franchise record for number of yards was even an MVP quarterback uh, candidate through parts of the season an amazing year 4,280 yards 31 touchdowns 11 interceptions um, and yeah just like one of the best in the league fell short in the championship game but I think he'll be back. I think that he is truly very good, and I hope to see him behind the San Francisco offense for a long time. Then at number 27, we have defensive end of the San Francisco 49ers, Nick Bosa. Uh, this is 23 spots lower than his previous spot. And he had 10 and a half sacks. I think he has a lot of respect, and I think he was just scheming around a little bit better. And with the other people like Chase Young on the defensive line, and they got that other guy from the Eagles, he didn't eat as much individually, but Nick Bosa is still very good. So, yeah. Then at number 26, we have wide receiver of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Mike Evans. And I have to say, I'm actually quite surprised to see him up here. Uh, this high, this is a 27 spot improvement for Mike Evans. I think part of him being this high is the Buccaneers made the playoffs with Bingo Mayfield. Uh, everyone is expecting just bad play from all these teams. The Buccaneers came out, surprised everyone, they had a very solid season. And Mike Evans had yet yeah, another 1,000 yard season. He is the the first, but he had 10 1,000 yard seasons to begin his career, and he also had 13 touchdowns and 79 catches, um, and yeah, it, it truly is amazing how successful Mike Evans has been, I think he is sneakily putting together one of the best wide receiver careers in NFL history, he will never go down as like a true top 5 guy in any of his years, I don't think, I don't think anyone was ever paying him that kind of respect. But, like, Larry Fitzgerald, like, when you look at his longevity, when you look at his consistency, after it's all said and done, he 
has an amazing track record and just a very productive year after like lots of just horrible quarterbacks. Uh, yes, he did get to play with a goat, but he was already balling out before him and he's still balling out after him, so shout out Mike Evans. Then at number 25, we've got quarterback of the Miami Dolphins, Jalen Ramsey. This is 11 spots higher than his previous stint. I returned from his meniscus repair. What? Yeah, I don't like this. Uh, here it says, the seven-time Pro Bowler returned from Miami's final game of October, then went on to contribute three interceptions and five passes defended in total. Despite playing seven fewer games, he moved up 11 spots from last year to celebrate his first season with the Dolphins. I think that Jalen Ramsey is overhyped. I think that, yes, he was very good on the Jaguars, and then I think in it, his time with the Chargers, or sorry, not the Chargers, the Rams, it was good, but does he deserve this kind of love? No. I think that Jalen Ramsey, there's no way that he tore his ligament, he came back part way through the season, and he had an okay season, and he should be moving up in this list, I think he's very well respected, well yeah actually, who am I to argue this, I guess people really like him, he has shut down some guys like DK Metcalf and things like that, but in my opinion, I think that Jalen Ramsey is a tad bit overrated. I don't think that he deserved to move up on this list. I don't think that he, ex he deserves to be higher than Sauce Gardner. I think that Sauce Gardner, Pat Sertain, are better players than him. I think that, yeah, in his prime time, he was better. But I think right now it's just legacy that's keeping him at this position. I don't think, as a player, anyone is taking him over Pat Sertain or Sauce Gardner. This guy is older. He is not as good. His best seasons are behind him. It's really impressive that he manages to stay this high. And I think, like, he has, he strikes fear in some people's eyes, but realistically, he does not deserve to be this high. At number 24, we've got a defensive tackle for the New York Giants, Dexter Lawrence, at 24, four spots higher than the previous year. Um, 92.9 BFF grade was the highest overall for any interior defensive lineman. Uh, and his run defense graded at an 89.5, third among his peers. Dexter Lawrence, one of the few bright spots on the New York Giants defense. He's been great for many years in a row. Um, yeah, not the most, like, flattering of stats, but I feel like I've heard good things about him. Uh, yeah. Anytime that I think about a player that I don't like as much or I don't like their I kind of get hung up on it, and I do think that it is crazy that Jalen Ramsey is that much higher than Sauce Gardner. I don't think that sits right with me. Anyway, after that, at number 23, we've got wide receiver of the Detroit Lions, Amon Ra St. Brown. Um, Amon, St. Amon Ra St. Brown has gotten better year after year. Um, finished with 10 touchdown catches. 119 yard uh, reception, 1,515 yards, uh, both third best in the league, and yeah, he's just got an infectious personality, I think a big reason why Detroit is booming on offense, why they're regaining relevancy and success, I hope that him, Sam Laporta, Jared Goff, Jameer Gibbs, all of those people on the Lions offense have a, another very good season, because I think it's nice. It's nice to see the Lions win some after all those years of suffering. Then at number 22, we've got the offensive tackle for the Detroit Lions, Ben Sewell. Uh, he was not ranked in the previous year, which I think is a little bit weird. Um, but, anywho, great offensive tackle. Um, he was the highest rated in BFF with a 91.3 score, best run blocker. 93.1, and he had his second straight Pro Bowl and his first All-Pro. I don't know why he wasn't on the top 100 last year, but good that he is.
guys know. And then we've got wide receiver of the Philadelphia Eagles, A.J. Brown, at number 21, one spot higher than the previous year. Uh, through two seasons, he has 194 yards, sorry, 194 catches, 2,952 yards, and 18 touchdowns. Uh, I think he had a very good stretch in the middle of the season, probably like weeks 10 to, no, right, weeks like 9 through 15, something like that, I don't know, he was doing really well, and then he suffered a knee injury in week 18, and then Devontae Smith did the best that he, do, that he could to keep them alive, he in their playoff game against the Bucks, but he just couldn't, um, AJ Brown, I think he's a little bit of a diva, he is very talented, you know, Titans shouldn't have ever let him go, a top talent, but, actually, I, there's no reason to hate on him, he's a really good player, he's just really good, I think, the Titans, he was really good on Titans, he's really good now, him not getting the ball and complaining about it makes sense when you're as good as he is and when the team, like, I guess on offense isn't doing as well, then it makes perfect sense that he would want the ball. Um, yeah, I guess I'm just being tough on him for no reason, but he is really good. After that, we move into our top 20. It's taking forever. But coming in at number 20, we've got C.J. Stroud, not ranked in his previous year because he was a rookie at year 22 in his life. He becomes the youngest player in the top 100. He had 273.9 passing yards per game and a very efficient 23 to 5 touchdown interception ratio. Um, oh well. He joins Tom Brady and Joe Montana as the only quarterbacks to lead the NFL in passing yards per game and passing touchdown interception ratio. Um, and the other guys won MVPs for those seasons. Okay, when you put it like that, I can see why he won Offensive Player of the Year. I mean, I knew that he, or Offensive Rookie of the Year, I knew it was great. I thought it was more about just the fact that they made the playoffs. I guess when you, I didn't consider his touchdown ratio. They still should have split the award. I don't think that he deserved it solely. I think that he played very well. I'm surprised that he was able to have as much success as he did. Uh, I thought that the Houston and Texans would be horrible. And CJ Stroud is that guy. But we don't have to discount Puka Nakua just because CJ Stroud is so good. I think they both deserve their flowers. And it is a shame that Puka Nakua will not get anything, even though he was so amazing, but yeah, CJ Stroud at 20, I don't mind it, I think he just, he's good, he's very good, and his offense just gets better, so we'll see, maybe even higher next year, uh, and then at number 19, we've got in interior linebacker for the Baltimore Ravens, Roquan Smith, uh, Roquan Smith getting traded from the Bears to the Ravens. Now Ravens defense, just playmakers all around. Um, the Ravens led the league in the sacks last year. He had 158 tackles. The Ravens also led the league in takeaways, and I guess he was their vocal leader, so it makes sense. I'm not mad about this at all. He moves up five spots from his previous placement, and yeah, he is pretty great. Then at number 18, we've got wide receiver of the Minnesota Vikings, Justin Jefferson. Uh, he only played in 10 games, but still managed to have 1,074 yards. Um, he was number two last year. He has the most receiving yards to any player in their first NFL, first four NFL seasons. And yeah, he was doing it with like a combination of Nick Mullins, Kirk Cousins, Josh Dobbs. And 18 is really too low. Justin Jefferson will 
Pelosi, uh, Sam Darnold, and J.J. McCarthy. Depends how well they can get the ball to him, but Jefferson is the best wide receiver in the league. There's no question about him. Yeah, and being out of number, like, top five overall in the NFL in top of wide receiver position, that is only because he was injured uh, when he was healthy. He is the best. He is by far the best. And I think that 18 is lower than he'll be if he's healthy. I think that he goes back in the top 10 easily. Then at number 17, we have linebacker for the Dallas Cowboys, Micah Parsons. Micah Parsons, you know, very good season. I feel like he's always floating around that defensive player of the year conversation. Uh, he gets held a lot. He does complain about it a little bit. The Cowboys do complain about it a little bit. And I think people just don't like the Cowboys, but Micah Parsons is one of the best linebackers in the league. He, no, not yet, just one of the best um, generational talent, and I like him. I like him a lot. I I wonder when he's going to break through that threshold and actually win one. I think that he is going to win one at some point in his career, uh, but it's going to be hard for the Cowboys to hold on to him, to hold on to Dak, to hold on to C.D. Lamb. We'll have to see who gets paid, who stays, if the Cowboys are actually able to make that playoff push. I don't think that they do. I don't think that they made enough moves to actually win a Super Bowl or anything like that. Every time that they have an opportunity to, they fumble it. One thing or another falls apart for this team constantly. So, Speaking of the Cowboys, at number 16, we've got quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys, Dak Prescott. Uh, Dak, at 16, had like an MVP-esque season last year. Um, his highest ranking in his four career appearances. He led the NFL with 36 passing touchdowns. He had 410 completions, third in passing yards with 4,516, second in pass rating with 105.9, uh, league's top scoring offense, 29.9 points per game, uh, and he's 31 years old. want to see him do it again. I think that the Cowboys are failing him. I think that the Cowboys are just failing as a franchise. I think all the players individually are doing the best that they can, but the Cowboys are like the Lakers, where they're just under constant scrutiny. No season is good enough. They always aim extremely high. They get close, and then they fall apart, and it's just heartbreaking year after year. Uh, and the difference is the Lakers... They actually did win it somewhat recently, and they do win it more often, whereas the Cowboys, they are really running off of fumes, and I don't know, I think that their championship window is closing somewhat soon, I think that Dak being 31, yes, you do see some quarterbacks go later into their careers, but the Cowboys are full of egos, Micah is going to want a lot of money, CD wants a lot of money, Dak deserves his money, you know, he just had a great season. And realistically, you need your star franchise quarterback more than you need your star franchise wide receiver. Uh, and even with that, you need your star franchise quarterback to be willing to take a pay cut. Look at Brady, look at Mahomes. They were content with not being the number one guy all those years. Yes, among their peers in their rankings, they were the number one guy, but on pen and paper, with salary, they weren't. And if the Cowboys want to be successful, they need they need to be more like the Villanova Knicks. These guys looking after one another, trying to bring in talent and not just sign as much money as they can. How can you be talking about wanting to go all in and win a Super Bowl when you just failed? You said you were going to go all in and now you can't even get your core players paid and you can't bring anyone else in. They've had a very disappointing offseason and... I, I think you have to blame the franchise. I think Dak deserves his money, CD deserves his money, Micah deserves his money. And you're just failing everyone. Then, at our top 10, we've finally. Wait, was that. Was he 11? No, he wasn't. <laughs> Sorry. At number 15. Uh, we've got quarterback of the Philadelphia Eagles, Jalen Hurts. He drops 12 spots from the previous year. Um, he had 15 rushing touchdowns with the Dush Push 
pass rating on done on passes over 10 plus air yards. He had 18 deep passing touchdowns, third most in the NFL. And he threw for 3,858 yards. He has became the second quarterback in NFL history with 3,000 plus rushing yards and 600 plus rushing yards in three consecutive seasons. And yeah, I think that Jalen Hurts, after like one mediocre second half to the season, a lot of people are writing him off. Um, he's fallen to like barely on people's top 10 lists. Jalen Hurts is still very good, one year removed from a Super Bowl run where he could, could have been the MVP. Uh, really, for Super Bowl MVP, I think that he deserved it. He played great, except for that one uh, fumble loss. And, yeah, I think it was just the memes got a little bit out of hand with his humbleness. He's a little too humble. Gets too many media responses. He's like too, too media coached at times. I think people want him to be more real. And, yeah, the Eagles just had a terrible second half to the season. And so, everyone's reputations went down as a result. But, uh, when it's all said and done, Jalen Hurts is... say top top seven quarterback in the league I feel like top three is very obvious top four is very obvious he's there he's somewhere there he's definitely top ten he's I think top seven uh, but yeah fantastic anyway after that you've got of the San Francisco 49ers, George Kittle at number 14, five spot higher than his previous. He had his second All-Pro honor in 2023 with 65 catches for 1,020 yards, six touchdowns, with uh, 
brushing he had four straight seasons with 40 plus scores which is the longest streak in league history touchdown machine threw for 4,306 yards 524 on a that Josh Allen is great, but when you see it like that, it's like, man, if he just got his, like, touchdown interception ratio down a little bit and limited on the fumbles, Bro could easily win MVP. We'll see how he does with no Stephon Diggs this year. I think his leading receivers are going to have to be, like, Khalil Shaker, even though Gabe Davis, like, Khalil Shaker, Dalton Kincaid, James Cook. It's going to be rough. I think that the, the Bills suffer. I think that the Jets honestly go in and take this division because their defense is immaculate and if Aaron Rodgers can put together even a half solid season, they're favorites. I could see the Dolphins even taking it, but I think that the Bills, they're, they're going to make the playoffs. There's no way that they don't make the playoffs, but I don't see how they manage to keep up when their defense is falling apart and they're giving away everyone from their offense. And then at number 11, you've got middle linebacker for the San Francisco 49ers in Fred Warner. Um, Fred Warner, yeah, just an amazing linebacker all around the field, always very productive. He had four interceptions, 11 pass defense, four first fumbles, 132 tackles, highest ranked off ball linebacker in the top 100. season with 14 and a half sacks, 50 quarterback pressures, 31 quarterback hits, 23 tackles for loss, and 90 tackles uh, for three straight Pro Bowls. Yeah, uh, top 10 makes sense. I think that you're on a failing organization, you are the bright spot on the defense, and that is amazing. Uh, he moved up seven spots and just barely cracked that top 10. I think that is well deserved. Number nine, we've got tight end of the Kansas City Chiefs, Travis Kelsey. He does not deserve to be top ten. I'm just gonna be 100% honest with you. There's no reason he should be this high. Um, Chiefs star is highest ranked tight end for the fourth consecutive year, despite falling 16 yards short of his eighth straight thousand yard season. He had 93 receptions, 984 yards five touchdowns. By all means, this was a down year for Travis Kelsey. Uh, when you think about how other people performed, yes, the Kansas City Chiefs won the, the Super Bowl, but this was a down year for him. I think that Kittle was better. And you just think about, like, there's no way that Travis Kelsey was better than Justin Jefferson last year or CeeDee Lamb. Why is he this high? AJ Brown, way better than this guy. I don't know. This is a legacy thing. People think that he's amazing. Yes, he is the best tight end in the league. I don't think that he... I think he deserved to slip a little bit more. I think that... Uh, yeah, I guess he did do some playoff-breaking records in the postseason, and that contributes a bit postseason wise he is great he did do very well in the postseason so I'll give him that but in terms of regular season play nah there's no world where CD Lamb should be lower than Travis Kelsey and then at number 8 we've got offensive linebacker Sorry, outside linebacker for the 
Pittsburgh Steelers, DJ Watt makes perfect sense. Uh, led the league in sacks. DJ Watt, whenever he's on the field, I think he is the best defensive player in the league. Uh, fully takes on his brother. Should have three Defensive Player of the Year awards by now if we're being realistic. Um, he's 29, already the sack leader for the Steelers, about to hit 100 sacks. Um, and yeah, he has got his fourth All Pro, 50 quarterback pressures, 19 sacks, 36 quarterback hits, four forced fumbles, three fumble recoveries. The dude is just a monster, and like, I hope that he stays healthy, but yeah, he could be higher as well. He is, he is the best defensive player in the league. Then we've got at number seven, Trent Williams, uh, offensive tackle of the San Francisco 49ers. He moves up seven spots. He is the highest ranking offensive lineman on the top 100 at 36. Elite run. Uh, second highest run blocking grade for BFF. Didn't allow a single sack last year. Third consecutive all pro honor. Yeah, I mean, when you think about how successful the 49ers were, how much money he makes, the fact that he didn't allow a single sack, I think that it's well deserved. Trent Williams, even when he was on the Commanders, for the Redskins back then, everyone knew that it was great. Got to the 49ers, has been doing his thing, has always been very good. Um, really the only offensive tackle in the entire league to get any respect, and it's hard, it's hard to say between him and like Lane Johnson, Zach Martin, uh, Chris Lindstrom, how big is the gap? How big is the gap really? Because in this list, it's ginormous, but like, when you look at Trent Williams, it's hard not to think that he's a little bit overrated when Zach Martin is so far behind him. And that's just a product of Zach Martin being underrated, so if we could give Zach Martin a little more credit, I think we could take away a little credit from Trent Williams, not that we need to. I think he's fine. I think that Trent Williams is fine, but I think all other OTs and guards just do not get the same respect that Trent Williams gets. And... We're going to be a little bit too late to recognize it with some of these guys. What the hell is Zach Martin doing around 50 when he's that great? Uh, anywho, after that, we've got defensive end of the Kansas City Chiefs, Chris Jones. Uh, Chris Jones, 10 and a half sacks, 39 quarterback pressures, 29 quarterback hits, 13 tackles for loss. But he was really the driving force in the Chiefs winning the Super Bowl. In the years prior, when the Chiefs won the Super Bowl, it was more behind their offense. This year, it was a more defensive campaign. Uh, Chris Jones really being the heart and soul. We saw what happens when he sat out in that first game against the Lions. And early on, it looked like a mess. They got him paid. He came back. Their defensive unit was very good. Steve Spagnuolo and Chris Jones, along with, like, Trent McDuffie, Legeria Steen. These guys do play a big part, but, like... that they won the Super Bowl, and this was a very good defense, especially in the playoffs. You see how they eliminated some of their teams. Like, it wasn't an easy road by any means. He faced up against the Dolphins, who had one of the best offenses in the league. Yes, the snow kind of slowed them down, but then he played against the Bills, and then he played against the Ravens, and then he played against the 49ers, and the defense really held up against all of those phenomenal offenses, and you have to tip your hat to that, and I do think that Chris Jones is the leader of that unit, so I think six is a good spot for him. I don't think that he's a better player than DJ Watt, but I think that he's good in translating good play into success. Uh, he's not just individually great. And then we have at number five, defensive end of the Cleveland Browns, Miles Garrett. His first 11 games, he had 13 sacks. Finished the season with 14 sacks. Uh, but then he had a shoulder injury. They had the number one ranked defense. Uh, with 14 sacks, 30 quarterback hits, 30 
seven quarterback pressures, 17 tackles for lost, four forced fumbles. Um, oops. I I think that the defense and the team performed well compared to expectations. When you have your quarterback going down, when you have your running back going down, when you have your best defensive player going down, and you still manage to make the playoffs and be as successful as you are, people are amazed and they want to give credit and I think that the credit should have gone more to the coaching rather than the players. I don't think that Miles Garrett had a better season than DJ Watt. I don't think that he deserved it more. I think that Miles Garrett is like a... It's like an NBA in a Jokic. That's how I see it. I think that DJ Watt is like Jokic and I think Miles Garrett is Embiid where Yes, you can see the charisma, you can see that he's very good, you do believe at some point in his career he's supposed to get one, he's supposed to get one, but was this a year? I think it's, people are gonna look back at it and be like, did he really deserve that? So yeah. Then, coming in at number four, we've got quarterback for the Kansas City Chiefs, Patrick Mahomes. And... This is truly why people are so in a frenzy over this. Um, yes, he did have some career lows. He had 4,183 yards and 27 touchdowns, which were both close to his career lows. He also had a career high 14 interceptions, but at year 28, he won his third Super Bowl. He is a multi time like MVP. He won the Super Bowl with an offensive core consisting of Travis Kelsey and a bunch of nobodies Marcus Valdez Scaling, Kadarius Tony, Sky Moore. Richie Rice is good, but like, what, uh, what is his name, Jonah Gray, just a bunch of, like, nobodies on offense, like, you lose Tyreek Hill, and you have an okay group, and then you just have a completely no help, and Travis Kelsey is off frolicking with Taylor Swift, and he still does good enough to get them out of situations that they're down to what he gets playoffs they're down in these games it doesn't matter it still manages to win and he has the face of the league he has the face of all quarterbacks he's definitely the best quarterback and player in the league I don't know how he got to fourth I don't know why his peers are discounting him uh, but this is truly crazy San Francisco 49ers Christian McCaffrey 32 spots higher than his last spot he had his first full season in San Francisco uh, led the league in scrimmage yards with 2,023 and 21 touchdowns uh, rushing champion 1,459 yards uh, had 949 yards after contact and won the offensive player of the year award and well deserved I think that three is a solid spot for him. I think that he was in the uh, MVP conversation for good reason. I think that he is that talented and he is that great. And I think that three is a really good number for him. I don't agree with him being uh, ahead of Mahomes, but that is not under his control. I think that three is good. At number two, we've got Lamar Jackson quarterback of the Baltimore Ravens and is 70 spots higher than the year before. Obviously the year before he was uh, injured. He had career highs in completions with 307 and pass attempts with 457. Completion percentage was at a career high with 67.2. Um, he also had a career high 3,678 passing yards with an impressive 24 to 7 TD interception ratio. 
get 821 rushing yards, 5.5 yards per carry with 5 touchdowns. Um, they had the most wins of any team in the NFL with 13. He got his second MVP. In terms of team success in him, I'm not going to hate on Lamar. I think that Lamar is extremely talented. I think that he does everything to help his team win. Uh, I think that they played badly against the Chiefs, and that was more on the coaching staff. They just did not do a good job of adjusting. Um, and... better quarterback than Patrick Mahomes, though. He deserves to be higher on this list than he was last year. He did have a great year. His team had a great year. But when you think about who won the Super Bowl and who they lost to, it was Patrick Mahomes. They were up on Mahomes and they still lost. And it doesn't matter that he won the MVP because I don't know. I don't think that was that strong in an MVP race. I think other years has been more impressive. Yes, he did beat out some other great players, and I do think that he deserved it, but two is a little too high for him. I would not put him at number two best player in the NFL. Uh, top five, sure. I it justifiably cannot see him being above Patrick Mahomes in any way, shape, or form. fine if Patrick Mahomes is one. I'll put it that way. If Mahomes is at number one, Lamar Jackson can be two. But this is too high for him. He cannot be ahead of Mahomes. And at number one in the entire NFL, rising six spots from last year, we have wide receiver of the Miami Dolphins, Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill becomes the first wide receiver to grace the number one top spot in the top 100 in his 14th year history following a spectacular season where he almost had the single season receiving record with 1,964 yards. He led the league with 1,799 receiving yards on 119 catches and 13 receiving touchdowns, but then he had a late season ankle injury, um, 602 receiving yards on quick passes. This is crazy. <laughs> this is crazy. I think the only way to react to this is if you've ever seen that clip of Lil Wayne being told about a top 10 rapper list. So they're telling him about who made it, where he is on the list, and Eminem. Who's not even on the list? Eminem? Who else is on the list? Um, Gucci. Gucci who? Gucci Mane? Mm. Was on the list? Eminem went on the list? Shout out my nigga Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out my nigga Gucci. Oh shit. Oh shit. Shout out my nigga Gucci. No. Yeah. Um, I think it's it's I think everyone knows Tyreek Hill does not deserve this spot, but the fact that he got it, let's let him celebrate. Let us marvel at the fact that he was able to somehow get this recognition. Obviously, his peers think he's great. I, I do think that he is a good wide receiver, or a great wide receiver. I don't know how, in years prior, when you have Justin Jefferson putting up the seasons that he has, when you have Cooper Cup winning the triple crown, how is this a better year than that? It's not. It is clearly not. I, I have him as the best wide receiver. I don't see how this makes sense. He didn't even win Offensive Player of the Year. I think if you're going to redo this top list, Patrick Mahomes at one. Sure, but Lamar Jackson at two. Christian McCaffrey at three. 
Tyreek Hill has four. I think that it, he should not have been higher than four. Because if he was higher than four, why didn't you give him Offensive Player of the Year? And why weren't people upset that he didn't win it? No one was really. I think everyone could agree Christian McCaffrey had a better season than Tyreek Hill. Him getting one is crazy. And it just has to be, they love him. I think everyone in the league must love him for him to get the... I'm not going to hate on it. I'm not going to hate on it. I do think that he is very talented, very hardworking. He he managed to succeed. Everyone was saying that he was a product of Frederick Mullins, and I think they both showed at least one another that they can exist without each other. Tyreek Hill can be one of the best, if not the best, wide receiver in the league without Patrick Mullins. Patrick Mullins can still win every Super Bowl and MVP without Tyreek Hill. They're both individually fantastic players. But when it comes down to it, this is too high. This is simply too high. And yeah, I I don't even know what to say about it. It's <laughs> I think it's crazy. So I think. as the week goes on.